Hello and welcome to Flippin' Through the Internet's number one Mad Magazine news, review, and interview channel. And today we're flipping through Mad Magazine number 477, released May 2007, cover price $3.99, which is indeed cheap. But before we do that, please let me remind you to hit like, hit subscribe, and leave a comment down below. That's the number one way that you can support this YouTube channel. It's the only way to make it grow, and it can't grow without your support. If you want to support me in another way, um, if liking and subscribing is not enough for you, link down below to my Patreon, patreon.com slash flippin' through. Um, you can get stuff. You give me some money, I'll give you stuff. That's how it goes. Um, coming out soon is, uh, is this. A little uh, linoleum print that I printed. Uh, I posted a thing on my Instagram channel. Oh, and a short here um, of me making one of them. Uh, these are the people that I get to thank for their support right now. Reflection of Perfection, Frank Snyder, Misamo, David Strickler, Megan McInerney, Shane Buckley, Bobby Weigel, Cam Hayden, Rob Wilson, Rod Meadsbury, Andrew Goldfarb, Casey Ori, and Little Cozy Nostril. Thank you guys so much for the support, and I hope I can keep on earning it with that. Boom, here we are. Um, it is Mad Magazine number 477. Before I really get into this, well, um, let's, let's look at this. This is the, the wrapped cover, um, and it's kind of a cool one. Look at how sad with subscription cards right there for Mad Kids. Um, I've had some uh, requests that I go through Mad Kids, and uh, I do have some issues of it. Um, not something that I'm really trying to collect. This comes from my personal collection issues that actually were delivered to me in the year 2007. Where was I? May of 2007? Yeah, this is right after I got out of the Navy. Um, yeah, look at that. Make your own post-it note. Simply cut along the dotted line. This is what I really like on the inside cover. They didn't normally print anything here. Enjoy this issue, Claude. Then turn to the very back of this wrapper for a special subscription offer. Um, I don't get uh, my subscription anymore. I, I get it from the comic book shop. Are they still wrapping these in paper? I hope so. I think that'd be pretty cool. Um, so with this cover though, um, mad, we salute global warming. Does anybody remember this cover? This is almost every cover that I come across, I recognize to some extent. I don't recognize this one at all. I don't remember seeing it um, originally. This is, it's 2007, so it's Mark Fredrickson who's doing the cover. Um, what's he up to? What's Marky up to lately? Um, anyway, we have uh, Alf riding a jet ski with the Chrysler Tower and the Empire State Building. I don't know. I've never seen the Empire State Building. Um, here we go. Ooh, that's right. The ad alert is in full effect. It's not in full effect. It's not going to get worn out like it does um, on other issues. Uh, they have some ads, but they aren't as oppressive as they will one day come to be. Um, how about this, though? We're going to zoom in because it's the ads nifty 50. Um, here we go. Let's see. Um, ooh, grandpappy. It's time for another edition of Mad's Nifty 50, the gold standard for Mad Celebrity Snaps. Below is a list of the celebrities that we most want to see gracing the letters page, holding a copy of Mad. Here's what you do. Send in the photographs. Sorry, pictures can't be returned. Via snail mail or our email address, letters at madmagazine.com. Put Nifty 50 in the subject line. And if we print it, you will receive a three-year MAD subscription. Remember, we also want celebrity snaps of people not appearing on this list. So get out there and start hassling stars. Um, this would give you, and they don't talk about it, but I think if you get a celebrity snap, you get one free year. And then it's, um, 
Oh yeah, they do say it. Obviously, I wasn't paying attention. I was so focused on um, figuring out what these words mean that I couldn't even comprehend them. Um, you get a three-year subscription if you get one of these. So you have the 30-minute moron Rachel Ray, Britney Spears, um, right after her, her mental break. Um, so that's fun. Um, Nancy Pelosi, America's housekeeper. Uh, Barack, don't call me Osama, Obama. Um, Sarah Silverman, Ted Haggart, reformed homosexual Ted Haggart. Um, Alec Baldwin, uh, Rain Wilson. Who is Rain Wilson? Oh, he's from, oh yeah, he played the, the weird guy. Um, Isaiah Thomas, Tim Hardaway, um, John Amecki? What is that? Ricky Gervais, Kim Kardashian, Sasha Baron Cohen as Borat. How would you do that? He doesn't, he doesn't walk around as Borat. Um, here you have the lady from Murder, she wrote, Jay-Z, Sarah Silverman, um, DC Comics VP pinup, Bob Wayne, um, Chelsea Clinton, and uh, Lefty Loose Cannon, Maureen Dowd, and uh, Choking Victim, A-Rod. And there's so many more. Irish meddler, Bono. Look at that. Um, so that's just sort of a fun one. I don't know. A nice little uh, fun thing that they were doing in the 2000s. I don't know when it started. Was it also in the... Um, was it also in the 90s? Here we go. I am going to have to hit pause and uh, try to get this glare under control. All right. I can't get the glare under control, so... I'm just going to have to to do my best work. Uh-oh. Here's uh, the ad alert again. Uh, Dead High Yearbook. I don't know. It's just a, just a book from a publisher. That's all. Um, we're going to keep on chugging along. Uh, here we have the Fundalini pages. A mad classic. A modern classic. Um, here's Boy Scout merit badges for the 21st century. You know, there's so many good things in Fundalini pages. And that's like, the nice thing is like, real bang for your buck. Um, the bad thing is that I can't go through all of them. Um, here we have the Jackass Stunt Safety. Responsible underage drinking. Uh, up here in the upper right. Uh, <laughs> school shooting survival. Um, providing a clean urine test. That'll get you a merit badge. And... Uh, Teacher student abstinence. Um, and, you know, so they went, this artist went with the more appropriate um, uh, portrayal of this, and that is a, a, a female teacher and a male student, because that is uh, unfortunately more socially acceptable, I guess. I don't know. People are less outraged by, by that type of um, betrayal of, of trust uh, between a, an adult and a child. Jesus. Uh, let's, move, let's move on uh, to the Fast Five. Fast Five reasons to upgrade to the new Microsoft Windows Vista OS. Vista was famously horrible. Um, not, yeah, just not, not great operating system, and they quickly moved on. Uh, did Vista replace XP, and everybody hated it? Um, number one, your computer's been running just a bit too smoothly lately. Two, you think Bill Gates' wealth has been overstated and you want to help him out with a few hundred dollars of your money. You're lonely and talking to tech support day after day after day is a great way to have some personal contact with somebody. Four, you're feeling nostalgic for the time you got your first computer and couldn't figure out what the hell you were doing and are looking to recapture the magic. DOS. Yeah, when you had to use, like, type in commands. It will put you one step closer to switching to Linux. Linux rules. Linux is actually like pretty darn cool. One of the complaints about the um, Fundalini pages that I have is this. Um, they wouldn't, when it first started, um, attribute the art to the artist and the writing to the writer. They would just put everybody's name at the bottom. Um, I mean, like you have this. So Rick Tolka drew this and he has the signature there. So you can tell that one. But for things like the Boy Scout merit badges, you don't really know who did that. This you do, because it's Paul Coker. 
you're going to recognize that. So, you know, for established artists, it didn't matter because, you know, it's like they're the favorites. They're going to be recognized. Um, but for lesser knowns, it's going to be kind of rough. Uh-oh. Oh, didn't I? I thought I said that the ad alert would not be uh, overactive today. I guess I was uh, inaccurate. All right, let's move along. Here we have The Biggest Lardass, um, which is uh, written by Desmond Devlin, and uh, artist is Tom Bunk. This uh, continues the streak of unlikely parody artists. Um, Tom Bunk did not get a lot of these. I think last week I did one with um, Tom Coker as the artist. Um, it's fun. It's always fun to see these artists doing something that you don't normally see them doing. And this one's perfect for Tom Bunk too, because there's a lot of opportunities for the disgusting type of chicken fat that um, he does so incredibly well. Uh, all right, I'm gonna, what is going on here? Behold the optional temptation round. This is a giant vast of vat of plastic spear spheres like a child's ball pit. Buried somewhere underneath are 12 golden balls. If you decide to take a chance, you'll have to strip down to a thong, coat your body with fruit roll-ups, jump into the pit, and roll around. As soon as one of the 12 golden balls sticks to your writhing miasma of human flesh, it's yours. Inside one of those golden balls is this week's immunity. I th I'm in. I think it could be the first step towards reclaiming my dignity. <laughs> There is something like bizarre about those shows where it's like, in one respect, it's like, um, you know, it's like people who m are sincerely trying to change things um, about their lives, about their habits, about their health, positive change. And then America watches for the novelty and entertainment of uh, these people. I don't know. Here we have, uh, you know what? I'm going to skip this one. Uh, this is Mad's teacher translation guide. Um, not because of the quality. This is no comment on this piece. It's just that there's a lot of it. And uh, I don't want to be rus rushed all the way to the end and have to skip stuff that I'm excited to show you guys. So here we have unabridged corporate slogans, part two. CNN, the most trusted name in news at least compared to those a-holes at Fox. PBS, be more boring than you'd ever thought possible. AT&T, your world, delivered, but barely audible over static. Um, McDonald's, I'm loving it, except for the violent acid reflux at 2 a.m. PBS, very funny, is probably not the best description for the endless reruns of Becker, and home improvement. Yeah, what's the deal with TBS? TBS, like, they fell off. All those Turner channels fell off. I'm not going to hit the ad alert. Ad alert is not for house ads, and this is most definitely a house ad. It's a mad branded thing. Uh, here we have a mad look at airport security, um, which is great. It's a lot, it's a, a lot of stuff with guns, um, which I guess makes sense. Uh, there is one in particular that I want to zoom in on and read over. It's this one right here. And you know, we'll do double duty. I'll do, you can read them both at the same time. So look at, oh, the little boy and girl running around. He's pretending to, to shoot her. Oh, he's a, he's a cop. Um, the dad's packing. She's, I want you to take my little bear. And look, he packs it and his gun and oh there's dad sitting at tsa um with a toy gun um it actually reminds me of a story when i was a young man and uh i was unfairly blamed for this my father was going through airport security and they pulled him aside and they found marijuana in his uh in his bag and naturally uh my entire family blamed me, uh, but it wasn't me. I wasn't the one 
I wasn't the one with the marijuana. I don't, I didn't, okay, at the time, yes, I did, but it wasn't me. Um, I think, I think it was my brother. I think he's the one that used the bag last and forgot and left marijuana and got my dad nearly arrested. Thankfully, my dad is such a square that TSA looked at him. They were like, we can't, I'm sorry, we can't do this to you, man. Um, here we have how global warming is affecting various people. Why do I want to look at this one? Not just because the great Drew Friedman art, but it's, um, look at all this pop culture stuff. And look at our guy, uh, Donald Trump. Now, this, is, this is in 2007. This is, I mean, like, listen, guys, I know he's very divisive, but um, sometimes it's good for me to see this and remember what a huge part of pop culture that he was. He's just a businessman. He's almost like what Elon Musk is now, right? Where like people don't like him. He's just kind of always around, ever present. And he's, um, I don't know, I think this means like Elon will probably run for president someday. But he can't because he's, he's South African. Is Elon Musk an African-American? I think he is. Anyway, leave a comment down below. Uh, Donald Trump currently working on contingency plans to convert Trump Tower into the world's greatest and most, most spectacular underwater condominium. Hillary Clinton, H-Dog, uh, huddling with key advisors deciding how best to straddle the issue. Um, here, this is classic. Kirstie Alley. Kirstie Alley off Jenny Craig and eating like a horse again since the entire planet is doomed anyway. Poor Kirstie Alley. Is she still around? And then here's Al Gore. Sequel, sequel, sequel. I don't like Al Gore, guys. I'm going to be honest. I don't want to get too political, but I don't like Al Gore. Don't like Tipper Gore. Um, not a fan of the Gores. A whack job astronaut Lisa Novak. I just felt bad for her, man. Like, how currently suffering the worst case of diaper rash prickly heat in NASA history. Pretty, pretty rough. Um, uh, here we have uh, Monroe and the new kid. Oh, here, hit pause and you can read Seven Periods Closer to Death. Um, this is like, listen, Tom Fowler is a great artist. Obviously, look at this. I love this. This is sort of like Mejia esque. Uses the uh, he's using like the watercolors or whatever, and it's great. It looks fantastic. But hashtag not my Monroe. No, 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 not my Monroe. Um, which is honestly kind of how I reacted when Peter Cooper took over Spy vs. Spy. Um, but I like Peter Cooper Spy vs. Spy. It grew on me that. Tom Fowler is, is the Monroe artist. It just never did. Um, Monroe is newsprint, black and white, Bill Ray. That's what it is. Um, here's, oh, here's, look at, this is an evergreen one. Uh, border, no crossing. The spy dressed as a swaro cactus, um, which does grow in Mexico. It does. Uh, he gets flung back over. Clint drives to a fence, flung back over. Uh-oh, here he goes. Ooh, reverse springboard. Wait, how did he... Um... Oh, I see what he did. He put the board there. All right, it all checks out. I thought, no, this doesn't make sense. Of course it makes sense. It's spy versus spy. Everything in spy versus spy makes sense. I will say this. Um, I've never, I, it took me a very long time to figure out that this was a subscription ad because I just passed by it. It's like, I ain't going to read that. Not the most compelling. It was like funny once. This is the third time, third in the series. I don't know. I don't know. Call me an old fuddy duddy, but I want, just give me a suicide ad. Okay. Is that too much to ask? Um, here we have. Um, John Caldwell, signs that your stalker has spring fever. Every morning, the hallway outside your apartment is ankle deep with 
Love me, loves me not, Daisy Petals. You'll notice that he's moved his pathetic little shrine to you, to you outdoors, to his gazebo. All things Beverly. Um, well, anyway, I got distracted by the chicken fat. Um, sacred box of items Beverly has touched. Um, holy hamper relics. It's a little disturbing. Those rambling 12-page death threats to you just seem to rhyme themselves and die like squirm and vermin. Ooh, that's good. Uh, he feels a crazy urge to freshen up his trunk with heart-shaped pillows, fragrant potpourri, and festive duct tape. These days, you notice a certain extra little bounce in his perp walk. Oh, here we have uh, those haunting apparitions of his long-decayed mother barking orders continue like clockwork, only now she's wearing her bright yellow taffeta apron. The rope is the rope, you worthless puddle of stagnant DNA. Hey, you know what? Here's an important thing to remember, too. Like, stalkers can be female, too. Like, just, you know, all you kids out there, you could be a stalker someday. Boy or girl, doesn't matter. Here we have heroes. What channel is this? This is on NBC, so they weren't owned by WB. But it still feels like an ad, and I hate it. Um, I'm not going to look at that. I never watched this show. It seemed dumb, and uh, I bet it was dumb. Stand by it. Um, here we have the uh, strip club. Again, a great thing, like the Fundalini pages. Um, I'm a stupid, a stranded supermodel. One coconut and a carton of cigarettes? I can live forever. It's true. You'd be surprised at how long you can live on a coconut and a carton of cigarettes. Trust me, I spent some time in Guam. The time machine that travels through time. This little baby gets 45 years to the gallon. Honey, can we go on a ride in the machine that travels through time? Uh, sure. Ah, oh, this is so great. Hey, who's that? Uh, she's my, uh, ex-girlfriend. Oh, okay. Wait, you said we were going into the future. <laughs> Honey, can we go on a ride in the t machine that travels through time? Nope. <laughs> Oh, God. That's good. That's very good. Uh, it only hurts when I laugh. Look at some Iraq war humor. Gotta love that. And here, Fantabula Man. This is Ted Rawl. This is the guy who also does Seven Periods Closer to Death. Um, <clears throat> and then we have here, my stupid, spoiled 16. I don't know if you guys remember this, but in... Uh, MTV had this show called My Super Sweet 16. And the premise was Sweet 16 parties. But it was all rich people throwing six Sweet 16 parties for their bratty kids who were awful. And then as the series like went on into a second season, and maybe even more than that, they just got more and more crazy because they were like, these millionaires and their spoiled children were like, we, we have to outdo the people who went before us. And um, so they would get like cars and they'd be like, what? This is like the, this is the, you know, BMW 3 Series, but it's not an M. Daddy, I wanted an M. Anyway, Herman Mejia doing the art. And who wrote this? David Croato. Croato. David Croato. Um, Herman Mejia's art is awesome. This is different, though. This is like uh, not his normal stuff that I really, really like. This is just sort of, uh, I don't know, not watercolored. Maybe it is watercolor, but it isn't. I don't know how to describe what it is that he does that I like. But it ain't it. I mean, I like it still. Never mind. Whatever. You guys know what I'm saying. Um, then here we have the unknown hardships of professional mascots by Teresa Burns Parkhurst. Uh, being highly flammable sucks. <laughs> Smoking the cigarette out there. Uh, once suited up, there's no fart escape hatch, making the costume a self-inflicting Dutch oven machine. Okay, this is like... I don't want to be sexist or anything, but this is... You can tell that if you didn't know that a woman wrote this, that it was a woman, because um, those like farts 
Every, I've never met a guy that doesn't like his own fart smell. I, it wouldn't be an issue that not like being in your own farts wouldn't be a problem. That's all I'm saying. Um, using a cell phone while in character is no easy task. I said I can't text message either because I don't have thumbs. <laughs> yeah, actually, I want to go look at this one. This like horrible butt crack. Uh, let's zoom in on that. Um, profuse sweating, a synthetic tail in your crack, and a unicycle make for chronic ass rash. That's, uh, that's disturbing. Now, here's something pretty exciting is this, this ad right here. Subscribe to Mad Classics and own this Mad Classic. Um, in April 1974, MAD published its most famous cover, the so-called Finger Cover, rejected by many newsstand dealers across the country. The issue saw limited distribution, which resulted in horrible sales and one very depressed publisher. With returns of this now rare and collectible issue pouring in, MAD's founder and publisher, William Gaines, sent several boxes of the issue to the MAD vault, where they remained undisturbed and forgotten until last year when the vault was emptied. Now, here's your chance to own your very own copy of this legendary issue. Now, I think they were emptying the vault because they were moving from their own office into the WB offices, which on a live stream, we watched Dick DiBartolo, Dickie D, doing a little bit of that. But what's special about this is that's how I got that issue. And I got a cool certificate of authenticity for it that I think John Ficar signed. But that issue is... It's one of, at least for like magazines that I own of that age, by far the best condition. Um, yeah, it's awesome. That's a great issue to have. And I thank Mad Magazine for getting me that issue. You know what? There is one more ad. There is. And I'm not going to do the ad alert because now I'm here on this screen. Um, remember, guys. Hit like, hit subscribe, and leave a comment down below. Thank you so much for watching. Toodaloo.